I've been a laptop user ever since the scandemic began. Whoops. Gaming laptops are alright to travel with, a bit heavy, decent performance, and a shit battery life. Recently though, I built a compact gaming PC that looks like a lunchbox that came with a carrying case. So I wondered, why not try traveling with this thing? So here we are, a portable, compact, gaming slash work PC setup. To be completely transparent though, I only brought this thing a couple of times to a friend's house for a work and tinkum session. I was going to bring this to the beach with a bunch of friends, but we did not have enough room in the car. Ugh. Puking on the road sucks, but at least you have an amazing view. Anyway, let's talk about how I pack this thing, how much it weighs, and the peripherals I bring along with it. You know what, let's start with the weight. The PC along with the portable monitor weighs 16 pounds or 7.25 kilograms. Without the monitor, it just weighs this much. I don't know why this uses pounds either. Okay, but how do I pack this setup to go? First of all, forget about commuting. You'll need a car for this one, unless you live in a country with a comfortable public transportation system. I don't. I just unplug this from my home setup, slap the portable monitor together with the case, then put the cables and peripherals in my yellow foldable bag. Then throw everything in the back of the car. This is what it looks like hand carried, and if you're wondering how I managed to attach this monitor to my PC, then here we go. I'll explain it to you. She should have not worn black. Introducing the peripherals, aka the complete setup. First up, the PC. You can watch the video where I assembled the whole thing with the help of a friend. I'm going to save some saliva and just put the specs on the screen. Here's a Subway Surfer video in case your Gen Z ass brain gets bored from reading. I am enamored with this thing. It's compact, simple, yet packs a punch. Just like me. Yes, I know the GPU is a bit weak, but this is the game I play, bro. And it's enough for video editing and for the other stuff that I do. The monitor I am using is from Uperfect. No, Armac is a brand of the electrical tape. Why does it have tape, you ask? When the monitor heats up, the bottom bezel tends to arc up, and the tape helps to keep it in one piece. The way this thing attaches to the PC is very simple. If you guessed magnets, you're right. On my desk, it has a swivel stand that you can thumbscrew in and easily remove when needed. On the go, I just removed the stand and with the help of a MagSafe frame, which I forgot where I got it from, and a MagSafe stand thing from Shopee. I can safely attach this portable monitor to the case of my PC. And yes, I looked it up. The magnets won't affect the performance of my PC. This magnet is strong enough to hold the monitor's weight, although you still need to be careful when walking around with this thing. See what I mean? It's completely adjustable too. Is the screen too small? Yes. Am I willing to bring my desktop monitor instead? No. Unfortunately, this monitor can't be powered with one cable since this PC does not support it, unlike my gaming laptop. So I use this HDMI to micro HDMI cable, whatever it's called, to transfer the display to this monitor. And to power it up, I plug this Type-C cable from IOHI? IOE, which came with a convenient carrying case and has my favorite color combo. This cable can be used for display, fast charging your devices, and transferring files. I don't want to pretend like I know how data transfer speed works, so here's the chart in case you understand it. It's an overpowered cable and I just use it to power this monitor. Oh, and it supports Thunderbolt 5 too. How about that? Okay, so for the mouse and keyboard, I alternate between these combos. My most used mouse, the Death Adder V3 Pro. I just love how light and comfortable it is to use and I can't find a replacement for it that is both ergonomic and not cheap for gaming. The grips make it look old though, but it still works. If anyone knows a good replacement set of grips without those wonky ass graphics, please let me know where to buy it. The mouse pad I pair with this is my trusty Razer Goliathus Mobile, which is still going strong. The keyboard I use with this is the EpoMaker Luma 84. And it's, it's all right. The quality is great. It's built like a tank with the aluminum case and the RGB is an absolute eye candy. The sound though, it's all right. I expected more since the EpoMaker keyboards I used before all sounded amazing. I love the way it looks though and I wish they added a dongle storage on the keyboard itself. But you know what, for 1000 peso less or $10 or whatever, you could get a keyboard of the same size which has a multifunction wheel, a dongle storage, an adjustable stand and sounds a bit better, in my opinion. This is the Lofi Lite 84. It comes in three colors and two sizes, but there's no RGB for any of it. And it's mostly plastic. To be honest with you, I mostly use this and the Luma 84, even though I like the look of the latter more. This feels great to type on and I like the sound more like I mentioned. The mouse I pair with this is probably the most compact and unique looking in my arsenal. Also from Lofi, the Hypace. 
The dongle that came with this is pretty huge, so I disconnect this via Bluetooth when I'm outside or via cable when the Bluetooth of my PC is not cooperating. As you can see, it is low profile, making it perfect for travel, saving you space in your bag. Speaking of space, does it not look like it belongs in a spaceship? The battery life is great, it can last for at least a week since it does not have RGB and you can see the battery life and change the settings via the web-based software. The clicks and scroll wheel feel and sound great, my only complaint is that the front skates are too big and have a strong grip than the rest. So it feels front heavy. Maybe it's just my unit, I don't know. Since I bring all of these in the car, I have the absurd choice of bringing a large reversible mouse pad for this, which is also from Lofri. I was also trying out this vegan leather mouse pad from Setechi, which looks super aesthetic. Using this mouse pad is also where I realized leather mouse pads are not for me. I used one from Grovemade a few years back and they all feel grippy to me. Leather mouse pads look great though and they smell nice. Speaking of Satechi, they sent me this cool luggage tracker which you can wirelessly charge. Since this thing looks like a traveling case anyway, I just placed this tracker here, in case I lose the PC for some reason. I love the design and I think it fits well with the setup, don't you think? I can track it via Find My on the iPhone, although it doesn't do that compass tracking thing like with the AirTag, but whatever. Satechi has been spoiling me lately too, so they sent their 13-in-1 USB hub which is in black, fitting the overall black and sort of blue aesthetic. It has two USB 2.0 ports, three USB 3, and one USB 3.1. There are two USB-C PD ports, two HDMI cables, which I don't use, an Ethernet cable, and a headphone jack. And like the monitor, I slapped this thing via a magnet from Moft. Isn't that fucking smart? Yes, I know that having three SSDs rubber banded into this thing is super sketchy. But trust me, I've been asking companies for a NAS. Based on this SSD setup, you know that they said no. <laughs> Fuck. Anyways, these are from SanDisk and Orica. I almost forgot the monitor has usable speakers, but it sounds like crap. So for my audio, I've been using this new product from Hydis or Hidis, the MK12 Taurus. I requested a 4.4mm plug since I use it with a DAC on my desktop setup which I'll mention in a future video. It came with a carrying case too which is where I place both the IEM and the 3.5mm adapter since this PC does not have a 4.4mm jack. The audio quality is amazing and so is the build and design. I dig the dark kind of smoky cable that doesn't get tangled when stored thankfully. It's made with CNC machined aluminum alloy that's lightweight and does not hurt my ears even with an entire day of use. You can now get a pure magnesium diaphragm hi-fi IEMs for around 10,000 pesos or less than 200 bucks. We are all Almost done. I've been using this awesome controller from GameSir, which feels and responds better than my Xbox Series X controller. This controller came with a charging dock as well, and what's even more surprising is how affordable it is. The controller features a stopper for the trigger and paddles, as well as a set of buttons that confuse me. The magnetic faceplate is replaceable too, and they recently released a new controller which I might get, so I gave this one to my friend. <laughs> Enjoy. Lastly is my bag. Like I said in my previous videos, I do not recommend this bag, but I love it. People kept asking me about it still. It's the Fjall Raven High Coast Tote Pack. It's foldable and can be carried in three different ways. It has no structure whatsoever and has no stretchable side pockets. The compartments are okay too. It's not the best bag of choice, but I love the way it looks, especially the collar. I got this one because it's foldable, so it's a good just-in-case bag whenever I go somewhere, especially overseas. Before we end, I'd like to quickly mention this Asian-looking curtain behind me, which was sent to me by Weefert or Weffert, however it's pronounced. Funny enough, it smelled like rice grains too when I first installed it. Before this, I had a weird IKEA curtain and wooden blinds combo. Don't ask why. So getting motorized blinds made me so happy. I went with the Woven Wood Shades Crocheting Series in dark brown since I'm planning to give this room a sort of Southeast Asian vibe. Stay put for that one. They have plenty of shade options to choose from on their website and they offer a smart version too where you can link your chosen set of shades to either Alexa, Samsung Smart Things, or whatever smart home assistant is available to choose from. Since I don't use any of those yet, I just went with the good old trusty remote. Installation was sort of easy. First, I had to remove my weird curtain and blinds combo, then mark the area where I needed to drill. Then drill these hooks or whatever they're called and match the three holes on the shades themselves, then voila, ready to go. Well, not really. Two things went wrong during this installation. Firstly, I did not order the plug because I thought it came with the product, so they had to do a follow-up shipment for the plug. Whoops. Second, my measurements are correct, but it does not cover the entire window because I drilled the hooks too high. Again, my fault. 
It's hard to lift this thing alone and measure at the same time. Also, I think it's supposed to be inside out or whatever since the motor I ordered is placed on the left side. Weefert, if you're watching, help me out so I can fix it for my future videos. So again, stay tuned. If you like some of these products, I will leave links in the description below. Thanks for watching. Yes, the video is over. Go watch another one or do something productive instead. Subscribe, I guess.